And joining me live now is the Australia, Israel and Jewish Affairs Council Executive Director, Dolan, Dr. Colin Rubenstein. Doctor, thanks for joining us. Week after week, the Jewish community here in Australia has been holding Bring Them Home vigils. It must be extremely difficult to hear this news this morning. It is uh, uh, very traumatic. Uh, the, the Israel and the Jewish world are uh, extremely distressed, to put it mildly, with what's transpired over the last 102 days. Uh, Israeli vulnerability uh, has not been experienced like this before. This is the worst massacre, uh, really, that Israel's ever experienced. And people forget that uh, a couple of hundred thousand Israelis have had to be evacuated both from the southern border and the northern border with Lebanon. Uh, so this is a huge shock. Uh, the, uh, the, the brutal murder and massacre of over 1,200 uh, Israelis it was shocking. Uh, the way that was done, the murder and the rape and the sheer savagery. And of course, the situation of the hostages, over 250 we know uh, nearly half of them have been released, but uh, half of them are still held hostage. And, of course, they're the insurance. There's the weapon that this barbaric, savage terrorist organisation, Hamas, and its leadership are using uh, to maintain any leverage uh, that they've got. And it represents a terrible dilemma for the Israeli government and the Israeli people, because on the one hand, uh, there's an overwhelming sense uh, of the need to rescue and save uh, these hostages, uh, absolutely. On the other hand, uh, there's a complete determination that uh, Hamas, uh, being what it is, a brutal, savage terrorist organisation, has to be dismantled. So it can't do what it wants to do, to repeat this savagery again and again, because people don't understand this is what the Hamas charter is part of the Muslim Brotherhood. Its charter says in black and white, its goal is to destroy Israel and kill Jews. And of course, regrettably, they were able to act on that charter and they mm. want to do it again. So Hamas has to be dismantled so that it can't uh, retain any military or political power going forward. And that's a dilemma Israel's government faces this very day. Foreign Affairs Minister Penny Wong will not visit the location in southern Israel where the horrific October 7 attacks took place. What's your reaction to that? Well, first, it's good that she's going. It's a little late in the piece, but it's good that she's going there. Uh, but I think uh, while she's meeting uh, with uh, some of the released hostages and families of those being held, uh, it's a pity she's not going south uh, to fully understand uh, the brutality uh, and the immediacy of that brutality uh, to not only southern Israel, but Israel proper. Uh, because while she said it's it's an information trip, not so much a solidarity trip, uh, uh, going south and, and uh, visiting one of the 22 uh, kibbutzes that had brutally attacked that day would, I think, uh, give her a better understanding uh, as to the mindset in Israel and the Jewish world about the need to do what she and the government do accept on the one, on the one hand, uh, that uh, Hamas should surrender, it should hand over hostages, and it should never be part of the equation again going forward. On the other hand, of course, uh, the government is supporting an immediate ceasefire and a permanent ceasefire, which is a confusing stance to take and contradictory with the former uh, quite legitimate goals. So I think it's quite disappointing. I mean, she is taking time uh, uh, to meet uh, with uh, Palestinians in the West Bank who are victims of uh, settler violence. Uh, that's an issue, of course, that's uh, reprehensible and the Israeli government is onto it and uh, uh, doing more to contain that. Uh, and, of course, it's uh, widely condemned in the Jewish world as well. Uh, mm. But there's no equivalence with that and uh, what we see with Hamas. And, of course, there is an explosion of uh, terrorism in the West Bank where Hamas remains extremely popular. Over 1,300 uh, significant incidents only in the last few months. And one has to wait, of course, that uh, the northern frontier, of course, is also extremely volatile. Right from the beginning of October 7, Hezbollah has been firing rockets at a low level. It's made that whole northern area unlivable. And uh, while it, it, it's to be hoped it doesn't escalate into a, a major uh, confrontation and war, Hezbollah is a serious organisation with 150,000 missiles. If it gets uh, to that stage of escalation, uh, of course, we have a, a real problem. And uh, people should understand the pivotal role that Iran 
plays in all of this, uh, not only in terms of making uh, Hamas's activities, uh, barbaric activities possible in the first place, uh, but also, of course, uh, being the godfather of Hezbollah very directly, not to speak of the Houthi problem uh, down in the Red Sea, which, of course, has got the attention and finally some action from the international community. Well, Led Dr. Rubenstein, uh, really appreciate you coming on the program this morning. We're out of time. We'll have to leave it there, but uh, thanks once again.